everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Buckaroo Designs, and today I'm gonna to do some brush show with you. Um, this is a project I originally made on my Facebook Friday, um, most every week, Facebook Live, um, on Friday afternoon on my group page. If you're interested, you can join me. Um, but I have made um, kind of a commitment to myself to re-record um, re these projects so you have them in a clean, uninterrupted tutorial. And I am really excited about this project. This was my original project that we were going to do, but before I could go live, these butterfly framelit sold out. As you know, it's the retired list time and things on the retired list are while supplies last. So unfortunately, they the framelit sold out, but that's okay. We changed it and made some flowers. Now I want to show you some things where this all kind of originated. Um, before on stage, I wanted to make a gift tag for a friend. Um, I was going to give her a little gift and this is what I came up with. Um, these um, flowers were made the same way we're going to make ours today. I also made some green leaves um, and I used our label, which is sadly also sold out already. These good things go quickly, you guys. And I uh, stamped the background with a sheet music music stamp. Um, so I kind of did this. I've been making some little sheets of texture with my brush out and I hadn't done anything with it. And so I started making some punch art and let me show you. I got kind of crazy. I went to town punching and creating these tags. I have no idea what I'm going to do with them now. Here's some blue ones. But I just love how they're all different. All the texture is different. Everything is different. You never get the same thing with Brusha, which makes all of these really unique. So that's where the idea came from. So I'm going to show you how I just make a bunch of background textures and I just kind of leave them there sitting waiting for me waiting to go waiting to be used on a project now you're going to use you're going to need some chipboard and I prefer to use our shimmer white paper I feel like um, things don't absorb down into it things kind of stay on the top and that way you get a really bright color that way that's just my opinion but that's what I feel like um, the shimmer white does um, you're going to want to tape it down that's going to keep it from curling up when it gets wet now another tip I have for you is to cover your workspace. Now this is Brusho in case you haven't seen it. They're tiny watercolor crystals and I mean tiny. They're very, very fine. Um, I would venture to say even finer than regular baby powder. Um, so when you get them, you only want to punch a hole in the top. I, I've done several holes because I'm impatient. One hole's not enough for me. But um, you don't want to actually open it. As you can see, the bottle is uh, very messy. So these are for those of you that like to be adventurous in your crafting. You know, these are not something that are gonna be nice and neat. Um, it's kind of messy. So you need to protect your work surface. So my favorite thing to do is to get some press and seal, glad press and seal, and you just stick it down on your work surface. And I usually kind of do several layers going across my table. And that way, nothing's gonna soak through. And as you can see, it sticks down to your surface. Now I will say that it usually is clear. <laughs> I don't know why it has these dots on. It's a little distracting when I open it up, but whatever, we're going with it. All right, so and we're also gonna use something different. We're not gonna use water today. We're gonna use starch. Um, I'm gonna tell you I've had this can of starch for many years. It rarely gets used. It sits over there with my iron, which sadly doesn't get used very much either, but I'm sure you all have a can of, of starch somewhere, and if not, you can get it pretty cheap at the grocery store. We're gonna use this with our brush show, okay? Now let me move my projects away so that we don't get any of these spray crystal, these stray crystals on anything. Now I'm gonna use the gamboge, which is like an orange, and the yellow, and the brilliant red. And I'm gonna start with a dry surface, and I'm just gonna sprinkle Sprinkle these, and honestly, you guys probably can't even see it. You can see the red right there, but there, I mean, these crystals are so fine. Make sure your fan is off. All right, so now that I've sprinkled it on, I have no idea what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna take my starch and just start spritzing. Look at that. It's quite magical, isn't it? So now you can kind of see, and now I'm gonna add some more. Let's see, we'll do a little bit of red there. And I really like the orange, so I'm gonna add in quite a bit of orange. 
and then maybe a little bit of yellow. All right, and we're gonna spritz again and see where we go. All right, now I'm gonna take this. See how this is thick? If, if I had done this with water, I don't think I would have this much control over the swirling of these colors. Isn't that amazing? I just love it. And you can continue to work. The starch is not gonna dry um, real fast. And I just kind of add a little bit as I go. I've also taken my fingers and kind of done some swirling. But the next step you, you're gonna see me do is really gonna do that for you. So once you feel like you kind of have a good look, this is gonna be mostly yellow. So if I wanted to add in some more red, I could do that. And I just kind of, just a little spritz to get it moving. Now you could let it dry like that, but something really fun that you can do is take some saran wrap. Now this is, uh, this is different from the clean, uh, the press and seal. I've started using press and seal in the kitchen. I never use this anymore because it drives me crazy. But, and you can actually use both and I'll show you, it actually will create two different textures. I'm gonna take a piece, if I can get it out of the box. I don't know about you guys, but my, Boxes are always torn and it's not coming out. Maybe that's just me. All right, I'm just gonna unroll it with my hands. Just grab some, tear it off. The reason I don't like Saran Wrap is because it sticks together, but we're gonna, we want it to stick together in this, in this um, instance. So I'm just gonna kind of crumble it and then I'm just gonna set it on top and I'm gonna smush. All these little crinkles are gonna create texture in our brusho, in our in our starched brusho. All right, now because of the magic of television, I have one that's dry already. Now remember, they they all look different. I'm going to show you several of them, and it does dry underneath here. I like to go sit it out in the sun, and that does it. That dries it really quickly. But if you sit it out for about 20 minutes and then peel it off, there might be a few wet spots, but they'll dry just like that. And as you peel it off, look how gorgeous. I mean, gorgeous. Now, I wanna show you some different ones. This one I did, same thing, but I think maybe I had more starch and less color. I don't know. You just never know what you're gonna get. It's just so beautiful. Here's one that I used on those other flowers. Sometimes you have more red, sometimes you have more orange. Here's one that looks like today's. All right, now here's blue, lots of just blue. And then here's the green that I had done. And green, you can get to green a lot of different ways. You just have to really play with all of that brush until you come up with a green that you like. I like to use blue and yellow together. The, the um, moss green is not very green. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our project now. Let's use this one. I really like this one. So I'm gonna take it and peel it off. And um, remember to make your paper larger than what you're going to need because obviously the tape is gonna leave a white edge there. Now that would just make a really pretty background on a card. Hmm, maybe I don't wanna use it yet. I don't know, it's so pretty. But I think we'll go ahead and we're gonna punch. Now remember, you could use, you know what? Let's take this off so that we don't make a mess. That's the whole reason we put it down. And now we can just roll it up and throw it in the trash. Now, you could use any punches or dies or framelits, any shape you want, but I'm just gonna make flowers. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna stay away from this part because I want that to be the center of my flowers. So I am using, this is my one and three eighths scalloped circle punch that is in the occasions catalog. I'm gonna punch out four of those. And then I'm gonna come over here to the yellow and punch out the flower centers. Now we have lots of framelits. We've got even the letters, the alphabet, that would be really neat to do somebody's name in this. We've got circles, we've got, I mean, we've got every shape imaginable. Now, I am normally going to just use my glue dots, but for some reason, my glue dots are eluding me. So please be patient while I just use my fast fuse here. It's never where we need it, right? All right, stick those right in the middle. And you can see, even though they all came from the same piece of paper, they're all very different. 
All right, the stamp set that we're using is Watercolor Wings, which is also retiring at the end of May 2018. Now, it's guaranteed to be in stock through May 25th. So if you have not gotten this, make sure that you get it because it's awesome. It's three-step stamping, and you've got these gorgeous butterflies. And the reason I'm using it today is because the other two projects I made when I made this one were also butterfly-themed. I'm going to use these dots right here and just one of the sentiments. So let's get our Melon Mambo and just do some lines across like that. And then I'm going to close that so we don't have a mess on our hands. And I'm just going to use my dimensionals and I'm going to start arranging these flowers. Some up and behind. Let's see. I want those are pretty close, so I'm going to kind of separate them. There's no right or wrong way. Just as you start placing them on here, you will see what you like. Mm, let's see. I'm going to move that one. Luckily, that dimensional will let me move it a little bit, a little bit like mm, like that. There we go. All right. Now I could go back to my green paper and punch out some leaves if I want it. But I think we're going to keep it pretty simple today and just do these flowers. And I'm going to stamp the sentiment that says, you are so kind. And I think I'll do it right in the center. And then I'm going to add just a few extra little doodads. These are the tutti fruity adhesive back sequins. I can pull it out of there. And I'm just going to stick these on. It's better to use the tip of your scissors. The orange ones would work. The yellow ones would work. I think maybe even the pink ones would work. Maybe one more. Oops. Let's do two there. All right. Let's put this card together. Now, I am using a Daffodil Delight card base. But then I am using a new color that's coming out in the 2018 19 annual catalog. This is called Mango Melody. It's an orangey. It's a mango color, you guys. I keep trying to describe it and I go back to the name. It's mango. It's definitely a mango color. And we're going to put our piece of white right in the middle. And there you have it. You are done. Beautiful punch art. You can use different framelits. Each one's going to look different depending on your brush -o. But have fun with it, you guys. I It took me a while to warm up to my brush show, but let me tell you, I can't stop playing with it now. All right, let me know if you have questions. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.